Um, so welcome to everyone. My name is Erica Larkins and I am the director of the Boehner Steeple Center for Brazilian Studies. And I have the honor of opening our event with a land acknowledgement. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with this, this is something that we do before all of our events on campus to express our gratitude and appreciation for those on whose unceded territory we live and work. For millennia, the Kumeyaay people have been a part of this land. This land has nourished, healed, protected, and embraced them for many generations in a relationship of balance and harmony. As members of the San Diego State community, we acknowledge this legacy. We promote this balance and harmony. We find inspiration from this land, the land of the Kumeyaay. On behalf of the Boehner Steeple Center for Brazilian Studies, I'm really pleased to welcome everyone to the first lecture in a three part series on land rights in the Brazilian Amazon. The series is the result of a partnership with Nature Culture International and Bem Viver and is made possible by generous support from the Stiefel Boehner Charitable Fund and Keith Boehner and Catherine Stiefel who are here. So hello and gratitude to Keith and Kathy for making this possible. I would also like to acknowledge the collaboration of San Diego State University's Department of American Indian Studies. Before we start, um, I have some thank yous. So thank you for, to everyone who's contributed to today's event, to the excellent team at NCI, Matt Clark, Karina Copen, Lauren Alvarez, and Kristen Hurd. In addition, much gratitude to the outstanding group at Bain Vuver, and in particular, Henaldo Lodival and Leda Martins. And lastly, at the Center for Brazilian Studies, thank you to the amazing and incredibly capable Crystal Bivona, as well as Flavia Suarez, Amethyst Sanchez, and Isabelle Simões. As I mentioned, this is the first of a three-part series on land rights in the Brazilian Amazon taking place over the course of this month of October. Today's event, the struggle for indigenous land demarcation, will provide us with a valuable context and understanding of land policy and contemporary politics related to land demarcation. Next Monday, we will host activist Sonia Guajajara, who will continue the conversation started by our speakers today. And then at the end of the month, we'll hear more about some innovative sustainable land use projects. All of the lectures in the series will be available for viewing on the website of our Digital Brazil project and on the center's YouTube channel. So if you know people that couldn't be here, um, couldn't find their way through the Facebook snafu, um, please let them know that they can watch the recording of the videos um, which, are, which will be available on those sites um, afterwards. So I'd now like to welcome um, Matt Clark from Nature and Culture International our partner in this initiative, um, and he's gonna say a few words, followed by Hinaldo Lorival from Bain Viver. And then I'll be back to introduce our esteemed speakers after that. So Matt, take us away. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. Hello, everybody. My name is Matt Clark. I am the CEO of Nature and Culture International. We are a international NGO focused on the conservation of biological and cultural diversity in Latin America. And as Erica said, we are co-hosts of this event, which we are very proud to be. Um, I know you didn't come to hear me yak too much, so I'm gonna keep it short. I'm gonna um, express my thank yous to the uh, Boehner Stiefel uh, Center for Brazilian Studies and particularly Eric and Crystal and your team um, for helping produce this wonderful event, which we are glad to be part of. Keith and Kathy, I see you in the in the audience, I want to express my personal gratitude to both of you for making this possible. Um, acknowledge and thank our friends from Ben Viver, Rinaldo, Reynaldo, apologize, um, and Leda and Emily. And last but not least, to express how excited I am to hear from Ivo and Paula, who are the reasons that we are here today. So I'm going to leave it at that, and I'm going to turn it over to my friend and compadre, Reynaldo, um, for a few remarks. And wonderful to see you all. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to be here. I'm very excited about this.
Hello, everybody. Uh, when we first start discussing collaboration between Vivir and SDU, that was a uh, we were to build trying to wall between the US and Latin America. The, the initiative then was promptly supported by Keith and Kerry, and, and that uh, put in a lot of effort and passion, both at the Center of for Brazilian Studies at SDSU and uh, at Nature and Culture International. I also like to thank the indigenous people of Horaima, in particular is the one who formed the basis for the Horaima Indigenous Council, the Makushi people, the Wapishana, the Tauripan, and the Potamona people who are engaged in the Bembevere project together with the International Institute for Education of Brazil and NCR. People that are facing the enormous challenges that you're gonna hear about today uh, uh, by Anapola and Ivo uh, in order to make a better future for the Amazon in Brazil. So thank you very much. I'm going to now introduce them. Um, Evo Cipio Aureliano is one of the four Indigenous lawyers who defended Indigenous people's rights on September 1st, 2021 at the Brazilian Supreme Court. He holds a graduate degree in public law with an emphasis on constitutional law and has served as a lawyer and legal advisor at the Indigenous Council of Horaima since 2018. He has expertise on indigenous people's rights, environmental law, constitutional law, international law, and human rights. Ana Paula Sotomayor is a Brazilian lawyer who has worked with indigenous people's rights since 1986. She has experience with governmental, non-governmental, and indigenous people's organizations. She is Romulo Gallego Fellow at the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights and holds a master's degree in international legal studies from American University. She works at the National Congress in the cabinet of federal deputy Jonia Wapishana. Thank you so much to both of you for being here and I welcome you now to speak. Oh, and I forgot one detail, I'm so sorry. Um, at the bottom of your screen, all of you, you can see that there's a little button on the right that says interpretation. Um, our speakers are going to speak in English, but if, it, if there's times when we decide that we need to speak to Portuguese, it, change to Portuguese, or if someone wants to ask their question in Portuguese, you can click on that little interpretation button and our able translator will, um, who, is also, who, is, who is over in that part of the Zoom world um, will switch the language for you and you'll be able to hear the interpretation on that button. Okay, Evo and Apala, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Erica. It's very nice to be here with all of you. Um, and I would like to thank San Diego team and the people from Projeto Bem Viver and its partners um, for the invitation, for this opportunity. Well, I'm going to use a PowerPoint presentation to talk about indigenous people's rights and land struggles in, in Brazil. Um, before I go into that, I would like to give you some general information about indigenous peoples in numbers. Next, please. Next, yep. Um, indigenous peoples are less than one million of the total Brazil po Brazil's population. Um, over. 500 indigenous peoples live in indigenous territories and over 300,000 indigenous peoples live in urban areas and they sum up for about less than a half of all Brazilian population. They are about 305 different indigenous peoples and they speak 274 different languages. Um, these people live in about 700 indigenous territories recognized by the International Foundation, and they represent 13% of Brazilian territory. So you have um, about a million people who are very diverse, who are very rich um, in culture, and 
they live in 13% of the Brazilian territory. For these figures, you can have an idea about how much pressure these people uh, suffer from economic interest in their land and its natural resources. Um, talking about Brazilian Amazon, the Amazonia region is almost 60% of Brazil's um, territory. There are about 107 different people living in it in 406 different territories. In the Amazon region, there are still some indigenous groups who live in isolation. They refuse to have contact with the national society and even with other indigenous groups. Um, in, in, in Amazonia, 40% of its um, area is um, federal and state conservation protected areas. And uh, of these, 20% are indigenous land. Some of them overlap indigenous land and conservation areas, but not much. Next, please. Slide, next slide, please. Um, here we, we, we can see the information I was talking about that way, where we see the green areas, the large areas, they are indigenous territories in the Amazon land. And if you make an effort, you can see small little green dots outside the Amazon area. And so you have indigenous territories in the Amazon, and you have these small green dots that's also indigenous areas outside the Amazon. Next, please. In the Amazon, um, there are over 98% of all indigenous areas in extension, not in number of indigenous territories, but in extension, 98% of the indigenous areas are in the Amazon. Only two, less than 2% of indigenous areas are outside the Amazon. They are that, that small green dots that we saw in the map before. And 60% of the indigenous population live in the Amazon and 40% of indigenous peoples in Brazil live in less than 2% of the areas. So 40% of Brazilian indigenous population live in that small green dot areas that we saw before. This is very important to have an idea about um, how, what kind of challenges they face and the reality in the Amazon and the reality outside the Amazon. Um, next, please. All these people, um, they have a milestone to protect their rights. It is the 1988 federal constitution. Our current um, federal constitution, it's the base for indigenous people's rights. Um, it has two important information about it. The, the first one is that before the 1988 constitution, the policy towards indigenous peoples was assimilation. The indigenous people should be assimilated into the national society. And the, from the 1988 constitution, they have the, the right to keep their own identity. They have the right to keep their own languages, to keep their own cultures, to ha have their own institutions, to, to keep their own livelihoods. This is very important. Um, before the 1988 constitutions, there were other constitutions and it, they recognized indigenous people's rights, but not as the 1988 federal constitution when it recognizes the original rights for the land. And uh, for that, it means the Indians do not have only the right 
to have the land where they live on, where they have their houses. But the land has a different concept of a territory. And a territory has to accommodate not only where they have their houses, but also the land they need to have their productive um, activities, like fishing, like hunting, like um, collecting products from the forest. Where, so the, the territory is not only this land where they live, but also it has to have the lakes, the, the rivers, and also it has to, to have the, the spiritual places. So they are cemeteries and they are sacred, sacred places as well, has to, be, has to be enlarged in the idea of an indigenous people. And only the, this land as a territory can, uh, can be um, responsible for the Indians to, to, to keep their own ide identity and pass it on for next generations. So I will, I will talk a little bit more about what the constitution says. Um, it also says that the Attorney General Office is responsible for defending indigenous people's rights. And those rights are under federal jurisdiction. This is very important because at the state level, there are a lot of conflicts between local interests and indigenous people. So in the constitution, the, the Indians are protected by the attorney general office and by their, their rights are to be subjected to, to the federal jurisdiction. Mm. Unlike indigenous territories in the US, Bra Brazilian indigenous territories belong to the union. So this land has a special um, kind of protection. Um, the Indians themselves, they do not own the land. They do not have the title of the land in this sense, but they have the right to live in the land permanent and to use the natural resources on it. Um, this right, the, the land, indigenous people's rights to us cannot be sold. It cannot be used in a different way of serving the indigenous people's means of survival, culturally and physically. Um, next slide, please. The federal constitution also says that the indigenous people have exclusive rights to the use of the natural resources in the land. But there are two kinds of uses of the natural resources that do not belong to this exclusive right to use. Using the land for mining and using the river to be exploited to generate electricity, for instance, can be um, done by other people than that not indigenous peoples. But for this to happen, the constitution says that it needs a specific law that will say how this can happen, how can be mining, how the rivers can be exploited to generate electricity. And this law has not been passed yet in the National Congress. Um, indigenous people also have the right to be consulted um, in the case of the mining and river exploitation. And it will be said in this law that has not been passed yet. Um, gold mining is forbidden in, in, in indigenous land. And there is a difference between mining by big companies and gold mining that happens by gold diggers. Um, indigenous peoples also have the right to not be removed for their land, unless there is a specific situations like a natural disaster. And they have the right to go back to the land once the problem has been overturned. Any titling over indigenous land is no, cannot have any kind of titling over indigenous land. And the constitution, this, all these constitutional rights 
um, they have been challenged by economic interests. So there was a ruling um, of the Raposa Serra do Sol case, and it, it is in Roraima, it's where evil works. And this case was brought to the Supreme Court in 2009. Um, next, please. Um, here we have the Yanomami people, and I was talking before about the difference of indigenous peoples. So in Horaima, in the state where the Ben Vive project is happening, the, there are the Yanomami people, they are the largest people living with less contact with the national society, and they, they have the largest area, indigenous area in Brazil, the Yanomami territory. And their land was demarcated in 1992. But even if the land was demarcated, they are suffering now with gold mining in their land. There is a video I would like to show quickly for you to know what's happening to the Yanomami people right now. Community. And it is um, on the border of the Urariquera River. And the Urariquera River is one of the main ways of the gold diggers invading the Yanomami people, the Yanomami land, to do gold mining. And this conflict that happened. Uh, in May, and it went on until June this year. So these people are facing this kind of problems um, in their own land. So um, we can go to the next one, please. And here we have the Makushi, the Wapchana, the Ingariko, the Taurepang and Patamona people from Raposa Serra do Sol. Their land was demarcated only in 2005. Um, the Yanomami had their land demarcated in 1992. They had, they had their land demarcated in 2005. Their struggle was over 40 years fighting to have the land, the right to the land to be recognized, to their land to be demarcated. Um, the case, even though it was decided in 2005, uh, the case, the, 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 their right to the land was challenged and was brought to the Supreme Court by the state of Horaima, from, also from rice farmers who want to stay in their land. And in 2009, the Supreme Court decided about um, their rights to the land saying that it was demarcated in a proper way according to the constitution, but in this case, it opened some possibility of changes of how to demarcate Indian land and also how to use the natural resources. So from 2009 up to now, there are more challenges to the rights of the indigenous people to their land. Here in this slide, we have um, this woman who, she, she is a spiritual leader. She was in 2009 in the Supreme Court defending in their rights to the land. Here we have a, 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 a local meeting um, of the people mobilizing, organizing to defend their rights. And in this, in this Supreme Court decision, it was the first time that an indigenous person, a woman, went to the court to defend indigenous people's rights. Please, the next one. Um, so this person who went, the, the Joanna Wapshana, who, is, who was at the time the lawyer of indigenous council of Horaima, she was the lawyer, the first indigenous lawyer, a woman, to go before the Supreme Court and defend indigenous people's rights. And in 2018, she was elected um, 
to be the first indigenous woman to be at the National Congress to defend indigenous people's rights. So this struggle of the indigenous peoples happened in many different levels, in the community levels, in the judicial system, at the National Congress. Next, please. Um, here we have another, another map where the brown areas are the indigenous areas where, where is in red, it is deforestation. And it's just to show the threats to the Amazon region where you have the indigenous territories are lands that are more protected, even though we have now problems like the Yanomami who have gold diggers in their land and destroying the forest, polluting the river. And um, um, here it's about deforestation, just the red one is deforestation, but there are other kinds of um, problems that indigenous peoples are suffering right now. Next, please. So there is now a major attack to indigenous people's rights. What I meant to say is that we have a, a good constitution, a constitution that was an inspiration even for other countries in Latin America. And after the 1988 constitution, like for 20 years, these rights to the land have been implemented, um, mostly with the indigenous people struggle, fight for these rights to be implemented, but um, economic interests from logging, from mining, from agribusiness, and from local states, they are uh, challenging these rights and they want to change the way the indigenous land are recognized to, to it not to be a territory, but to be just the place where they live in. And they are challenging it in the Supreme Court and they are also challenging it in, at the National Congress. They, there are, at this moment, many bills to change the right, these rights, to change the right to the land, to permit mining, logging, and other activities. And about the, the, the new um, challenge that we have at the Supreme Court, we have evil to speak, uh, to speak about that. Thank you. Thank you, Next. Ana Paula. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Ana Paula. Uh, hi, friends. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be here at this space. Uh, so, ha so happy to share a little about our work here in the in Brazil. So, how Ana Paula was saying the struggle goes on at the supreme level at the high court in Brazil. You can see there, it's me on the, I was speaking and uh, defending the indigenous people rights uh, because there is a, in Brazil, a shopping case debated uh, as general repercussion at the Supreme Court. It is under analyzed by the, the, the judges that is in the Supreme Court, touch especially on the indigenous people's rights, land rights. Uh, the, the reporter of the, this case, he said that the, he affirmed the correlation of the indigenous tests, indigenous tests with the right to self-determination, which is an important right of the indigenous people recognized in the current constitution and international uh, in at, at international levels too. Uh, he said, in, including referring in his vote to the declaration and ILO convention 169, that this correct interpretation of the constitution is of the constitution in the same line with international standards in is the existence of a state obligation to recognize indigenous people, people's land, uh, the right of traditional occupation of indigenous people's land, 
He said that in accordance with the indigenous cases present in Brazil for more than three centuries, that means that uh, in this current uh, government that we are we have in Brazil, the defense that there must be a time framework to them to recognize indigenous people's land. But we, the indigenous people, the indigenous lawyers, defend that uh, the right to learn must don't have to uh, follow a uh, time work with the one to say it's is the 5th of October uh, 1988. For them, it's supposed to be respected. But we say that our right is original. It's it is uh, since uh, before the, the, the state uh, exists, that how we know now. So now we, the indigenous lawyers, are defending these rights that we say it is uh, the basis of life for the indigenous peoples in Brazil, uh, in, including me and other friends who are indigenous lawyers. Uh, is uh, acting, defending these rights. It is uh, historical matters to, for us because it's the first time that indigenous lawyers come, came together to defend their own rights at the Supreme Court. As Anna Paula was saying, we had other lawyers defending our rights, like Joanne Wapishano defended Raposa Serra do Sol in 2009, but now we have other liars, lawyers to defending, indigenous lawyers in defending uh, our rights with our own liars, lawyers, indigenous lawyers who have been working along with the indigenous organization at, at the regional level, local level, and national level. So that, this is very important. You can you can. See in this day, in, on this day, there were more than 6,000 indigenous leaders uh, watching what was going on at the Supreme Court. You can pass next. So how I was saying, I work at local levels at an indigenous organization known as Indigenous Council of Roraima. It is one of the biggest organization, indigenous people organization in Brazil and recognized at international levels too, that won, the, uh, including the Equator Prize in 2019 and uh, uh, completed 50 years since it was uh, implemented as an indigenous organization. Uh, and we are very proud to be working with this, work along with this indigenous organization. We're, 99% of all the, 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 the workers, the people who contribute in this organization are indigenous people. So I work along with this organization. I'm an indigenous lawyer, and we have others to work in along in other departments in this organization who also are indigenous, who studied to become uh, lawyers and other uh, areas too. And uh, in Brazil, every year, uh, we used to uh, have very big meetings at national level, which, of course, happens every, at Brasilia. Uh, we call it the Indigenous People National Protest Camps. But it is a big meeting where a lot of indigenous leaders go to Brasilia to see that they are not happy, they, they are against uh, some uh, national uh, politics that have, they, are, they are trying to approve bills or trying to approve legal mining in indigenous people and other treats that they have at national levels. And also now this, this year, we, the indigenous leaders also decided to uh, to do this big meeting at in Brasilia because of this case, which is um, being analyzed by the Supreme Court, 
this shockling case that I said. And uh, so this test is what how I, I explained the, the, the time framework. Uh, it is very, it's very, uh, it's not good for indigenous people because if they approve the approve the time work, we would we are thinking about like 829 lands, indigenous people land will not be recognized legally. So it is a big threat to the indigenous peoples, especially the right to learn. Uh, so we can see now what the indigenous, our elders, our teachers, how we can call them like this, our elders, like Jassi de Souza, he, what, he's, what he's thinking, what they're thinking about this time framework, which is under underlines at the Supreme Court. And after it be my speech though, I was, uh, in 2029, last month I was I had the opportunity to speak at the UN level about the the, the time time framework. It will be there will be a video after Justice speech. You can show it now, please. Então, eu queria falar um pouco do marco temporal. É o seguinte, nós somos povo indígena aqui no Brasil, né, é que não existia nada de lei. Né? Lei seria nós mesmos, como povo né, indígena. E fomos encontrados. É, veio as pessoas, hoje a história conta, né, é que vieram pessoal do Portugal para invadir o nosso Brasil, invadir nossos indígenas. Né? Então, até ali, nós sentimos que nós somos filhos daqui nativo do Brasil. Agora que falamos não índio, que chegaram para invadir a nossa terra. Aí então já tem as leis, né? Artigo 231 e 2, né? Estatuto do Índio, né? É 69, que defende o direito do povo indígena. Agora eu quero inventar mais outra coisa, né? É procurando intimidar o povo indígena, é quando fala de marco temporal. Então está sendo julgado agora, desde agosto, né, pelo Supremo Tribunal Federal. Eu acredito que o Supremo vai entender o nosso sofrimento da desinvasão né, de garimpeiro, mais fazendeiro. É, eu te agradeço muito. A força também deu para nós aqui, que estava por sedução do Supremo Tribunal, votando a nosso favor. Eu espero né, essa compreensão do Supremo Tribunal e entender o sofrimento do povo indígena. Porque não pode é, colocar mais outra coisa para intimidar as comunidades indígenas. This is uh, one of our uh, leaders from the Makushi group, which is my people, who he has like his more than 70 years. He dedicates his life to fight for the recognition of the Raposa Sakusol, indigenous people land. He is still alive and he has a lot of knowledge and information uh, but the struggle during more than 40 years to recognize the or indigenous people on next. This is Madam President, see me once again, extend the supports and appreciation for the MRIP, an indispensable mechanism in the fight to, for the rights of indigenous peoples at the global level. We commend the comprehensive study on the right to self-determination of indigenous peoples, which reinforces the declaration itself and the two UN covenants in addition to forming part of the international Jews cogens. In Brazil, in the Chocolin case, debated as general repercussion under analysis by the Supreme Court, touches expressly on this right, which was correctly addressed by the judge reporter Ed Fakin. He reaffirmed the correlation of the indigenous to thesis with the right to the self-determination, referring in his vote to the Declaration and ILO Convention 169. The correct interpretation 
of the Constitution in line with the international standards is the existence of a state obligation to recognize the right of traditional occupation of indigenous lands in accordance with the indigenato thesis present in Brazil for over three centuries. Contrary to the Constitution and international standards, there is the thesis of the temporal framework which limits the traditional right to occupy land, legitimizing the force of victims and significantly contributing to a process of extermination of indigenous peoples in Brazil. Thank you very much. This is my speech at the UN recently, on the 29th of September, talking about this case at uh, the UN level was my first experience as a lawyer. And I was very proud and happy to represent my people from Brazil. And they trust my, my work. It is a big responsibility that we have now. Our youth, our generation has the responsibility to carry on our struggle for our rights. That was our leader's dream. Yes, I think next we have one more. Madam President. Yes, this is even the one of uh, the national level, the big meeting we had. I was there in this uh, one of me, I was holding a candle somewhere in, the, in this uh, big photo. Yes, and uh, I was saying as a lawyer, we have the responsibility to defend, not only to defend, but be there at the fighting for our rights. Like this picture say, shows, we are in we are in front of the Supreme Court at night. After the judgment, uh, they started to uh, vote the case, and I was thinking uh, that time I am here with my people. So tomorrow I will be as a lawyer, like defending our rights. But I'm here now with dance, uh, dancing, singing, the participating at the rituals that our strengthen our. Uh, not strengthen us, the indigenous lawyers. It is very special for us. It's spiritual strengthening for us. It is uh, very emotional, and uh, I am almost I was crying at that night. So they, they, I was I am very proud to work on with my people. And I, the only thing we we wanted the state, the, the the government to do for us is respect our life, our rights. That's all we want. Uh, that's, so I think this space is very important to so change uh, experiences and also tell the world what we are facing in Brazil, in the Amazon and in Brazil. Thank you very much.